Hello, my name is John Bertram Irwin. I am the director and editor of Mike the Birdman. I was in my first year of graduate school in the journalism department at the University of Arkansas. In journalism, you can do a documentary track, and that's what I was doing. So we were all tasked, all pe people in the class, like all 12 or whatever, were tasked with uh, coming up with their best pitches for potential documentaries to produce. Um, and the film that I pitched and was eventually selected to be produced was Mike the Birdman. The reason I decided to pitch that idea is that when we were asked to make pitches, I knew that I wanted to make a film that focused on a you know, specific person or individual and make it more based on a character than on an idea or um, a message, if you will. And Mike was one of the people that I put on that short list. Um, and the reason for that was my dad has always been interested in all these different hobbies. Um, he's a flint napper, he used to geocache all the time, he loves working in his garden, he does all these little things, all these like outdoorsy hobbies, and one of, one of the hobbies he picked up for a little bit was bird watching. Um, and during that period where my dad was a bird watcher, he just kind of met Mike uh, through happenstance out at Lake Fayetteville, and I believe the anecdote is in the film. So because uh, my father and Mike were friends and were bird watching together, I would see Mike from time to time at the house and he would call the house from time to time. And whenever he'd call, he would say, hello, this is Mike the Birdman. He would introduce himself as Mike the Birdman. And you just got the impression from him that bird watching was much more than a hobby to him. To my dad, it was a hobby, but to Mike, bird watching was his, kind of his identity in a way. Um, most of what I knew about him was bird related um, and he just struck me as somebody who had like a unique and individual passion for what he did um, and in particular for something that most people think of as just a fun hobby uh, he took it very seriously from like a scientific perspective and I believe that comes out in the movie. So Mike was on my short list because of all that but I and finally decided to pitch that idea specifically because I had told my parents about this idea and not the next day um, there was a clipping that my mother cut out for me from the newspaper about Mike um, where he had been, um, someone had seen him crossing college over towards Zion near Lake Fayetteville and he was carrying his tripod and telescope and wearing his normal clothing which I suppose does look kind of like a costume to some people but Anyways, the, uh, the newspaper said that somebody had called the police on him and thinking that he had a rifle um, when in reality he had a telescope. And we just thought that was a very funny little story. It was like in a Sunday paper. It was, you know, it was just like a fun little story to read. Um, and so when I found that, I was like, oh, we have to do the movie. Now we have to ask Mike about that. Um, so I had him come over. I asked my parents to invite him over to do a little pre-interview with me for the pitch. So I made like a little three minute version of this film um, with just Mike talking about that incident and just general bird watching, his general reason for bird watching and showed that to the class and my film was selected to be produced. The other members of my team were Nanette Sosa who was acted as producer on the film and Paige Murphy who was the cinematographer for the film. All three of us wrote it um, and I edited and directed it. So my initial idea for the film is that we wouldn't have any narrator and we wouldn't have any other outside characters. It would just be Mike birdwatching and we just see him birdwatching and we would learn about him through that and he would kind of, you know, talk to, we would talk to him while he was doing this and he'd explain what he was doing and it'd be kind of like a, a cinema verte sort of thing. Um, quickly we realized that wasn't going to work very well because while Mike is very captivating on camera and well spoken and all of that, it <laughs> it was kind of hard to get him to focus in on stuff. You know, he would he would talk in paragraphs and um, about you know bird stuff, which is interesting to me and to him and to all of us, but probably wouldn't work super well in a film. Um, so then we had the idea to expand it a little bit more to be kind of more about Fayetteville bird watching in general I mean it still very much focuses on Mike but we do touch on elements of the local bird watching scene and that's why we decided to bring in Joe Neal um, and Still on the Hill. Still on the Hill did the music for the movie um, we they allowed us to use their songs um, and 
the reason we contacted them and that they agreed to let us use their music was that um, uh, Paige and uh, Nanette, both of them kind of independently said this at one point, but they had heard them on like Ozarks at Large, is that a radio program? Something like one of those, they heard them on NPR or something like that talking about their uh, involvement in bird watching and in Halberg Camp, which I actually went to when I was a kid, um, the bird watching and nature camp out at Lake Fayetteville during the summers. Um, and we found out, I mean, I'd seen them perform before, but I guess I didn't really connect the dots on how involved they were in like bird watching and Fayetteville in general. Um, they have a lot of songs about birds, which are used in the film. Um, and it sort of helped, their music helped sell the like unique Fayetteville vibe that the film hopefully has. So back to Joe Neal, um, he was a great help in the film. Um, I had seen his bird books because my dad, like I said, is interested in that. And so we, we have some of his books. Um, and he was a great help in, this, in regards to providing a little bit more context to Mike's going on. Mike didn't like to talk about himself, so Joe was willing to talk about him. He's known him for like, what, 30 years now? More than that, I think. Um, and so he was a great help in both providing sort of context for Mike, um, kind of going into the way he approaches birding from someone else's perspective who knows him well, and also providing photographs and um, allowing us to come along with him on one of his trips to uh, Devil's Den where the Audubon Society was doing a bird watch. Joe had a whole folder, like he, had, he has a bunch of folders of different things in his house, but one of his folders was just completely dedicated to Mike Mladenov. Uh, he had photographs from back in the 80s, he had data that Mike had given or had done with Joe for their books and their research that Mike had done saved in this folder, so we have that in the film. So one of the most interesting uh, revelations to come out of the movie and actually following Mike and talking to Mike and talking to his friends and people who knew him was that going into it, I knew obviously Mike, Mike's, you know, very, very large, very significant portion of his life is dedicated to bird watching and gathering bird data. Um, and something one might wonder about in regards to that is why? What, what about birding is does he find so fascinating um, and what element of it has driven him to dedicate so much of his time um, to this pursuit. Uh, when one thinks of bird watchers, they typically think of somebody, a hobbyist really, um, somebody who thinks birds are pretty, because um, they are, um, and you know, you can find them in most environments and especially in Fayetteville where we have a lot of, you know, parks and forests and things like that it makes sense that bird watching would be very popular around here. Um, but one of the interesting revelations to come out of this is that Mike is not interested in that element of bird watching. Now I'm sure if you ask him, he'd say, sure, birds are pretty. I mean, of course he thinks that, but that's not his reason for bird watching. And I don't want to go too much into that because the film, that's one of the big moments of the film, but he's much more interested in the scientific side of things than I suppose I would have initially realized. Um, he actually, he's from Chicago, I believe, the Illinois, um, Chicago area, and he actually came to Fayetteville to pursue a degree in ornithology. So he wasn't born here, um, he came here to pursue the science of bird watching. So this film has been shown quite a few times. Um, we had the premiere at the Botanical Gardens of the Ozarks, and when we did that, we had Still on the Hill come and play a little show with us, which was really fun. Um, and it's, it played the Hot Springs Film Festival, um, Filmland in Little Rock, Fayetteville Film Festival. And Paige showed it at a couple places in California because she was out in LA for a while. Um, and I can't really remember the exact places that, that it showed, but it showed a couple places in California. So I'm currently working on two feature length documentary films. Um, the one that's more imminent um, is called Access, and hopefully soon we'll have um, a website up and a trailer and all that, but um, simply it's about ballot access and specifically in regards to Arkansas. Um, ballot access is an issue that I think a lot of people don't even know exists. Um, usually when one, I tell someone I'm doing a film on ballot access, they think I mean like voter suppression. Um, which is not what ballot access is, it's kind of the candidate side of voter suppression. Um, the ways that states 
because because states set their own election laws keep third party and independent candidates that aren't part of the two major parties off the ballot through restrictive legislation and Arkansas has a storied history of repeatedly passing unconstitutional laws in regards to ballot access and that's what the film explores. Okay and finally I would like to thank um, Shiloh Museum for showcasing my film and I hope everybody enjoys it. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make and the film has been very good to me. The reception has been very good and you know it's you know been screen going three years now so that's feels pretty special um, so thank you. I'm Steve Irwin, and I'm trying to put a little bit of water in this bird bath so the birds won't, won't leave me. That'll do for a while. You can have too many birds, bird houses in the neighborhood. We used to attract uh, house wrens of that one. I actually put that up uh, for a, a flying squirrel, but I believe it's too low. It might fall apart if I touch it. Well, maybe not. Used to, uh, you'd have an exotic bird or two. Like the most exotic thing I've had was a uh, summer tanager. Anyway, it started showing up at my feeder and it stayed with us all winter and left at tax time, April 15th. But anyway, it was a neat experience and found out later that uh, they also enjoy eating bees. And there's a bee tree right over there. It's been there for over 10, 20 years. It's still there. You want to see a bee tree, I'll be glad to show you. When you study birds, you can go in it all your life and you might know 99%. But I'm, I'm happy to stop at about 70 to 80. I, I know all the big things, the little things, I'll let the experts uh, dwindle on those. You're, you have a friend that you know, his name is Mike. Yes. And if you want to repeat that, your friend Mike. My friend Mike, yes. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, so I won't, I won't, I won't say his last name. But uh, I first met him, I was out at Lake Fayetteville, and he was perched on, I think, the Million Dollar Bridge with his uh, telescope. But uh, he, was, he was looking at, at birds from the bridge, the Million Dollar Bridge out of Lake Fayetteville. But anyway, he was very nice, and, and uh, he just mentioned that if I was interested that uh, Audubon was having a meeting or an outing the next week. I started, I went several outings after that, and Mike and I became friends, and uh, we went on individual outings quite a bit. Hey, Steve. Hey, Mike. Hey, there. Linda gets a kick out of him. Linda likes him very much. She fakes uh, brownies for him, which she likes. Mike, here's you some brownies for helping us out. Okay, well, thanks, well you're welcome. I know you love them. I do. Well, <laughs> as long as they're not over. <laughs> <laughs> A title? Oh, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> Your name? <laughs> name? Name, rank, and serial number? Uh, my name? You mean my full name? Uh, Michael Allen Mladenov? <laughs> and you like birds? Yes. So we're in Fayetteville. I'm going to have you repeat If, if you want a title, you, you know, I do, when, when I fill out my tax returns, that they asked for an occupation, and, and even though I really don't have one, I put down researcher because I, I kind of see myself a, 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 as doing research. Uh, the, the reason I go bird watching is, is to try and find out things about bird distribution. So, w whether that's ex accepted by other people, well, that that uh, you know, I don't know.
So when I go birding, uh, <clears throat> I, I usually uh, start after, uh, you know, getting dressed. I noticed that today was supposed to be in the lower 20s, but it was actually in the lower 30s for a start, so that, that makes a big difference as far as my toes go. Uh, okay, so after I get, every, I get everything together, I go out, so I, I usually take uh, the, the orange bus, and I take that to the, to the red bus, and I take the red bus to the mall. And then I walk from the mall to, to the Zion Road entrance to, to Lake Fayetteville Park. There's something. There's another place where may, maybe you have to watch where you step. <laughs> all, all these dogs, a lot of times, a lot of people don't pick it up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Usually, I mean, the first thing I try is is just uh, uh, what I call spishing, and that's just making sort of a, a sort of a high pitched sound. It's and the other thing is, which I, I think I use more than than most birders, but I think it's the most effective effective thing is squeaking. But I go like. It's, in order to just identify a bird, it's important to get a good look at it and a long look. And to pay attention, uh, unlike the, the, the people who described me as, as, as a guy with a rifle. Hey, uh, there's a, a questionable suspect that was at the Northwest Arkansas Mall in the corner of uh, Thompson Street, College Avenue. Okay. Uh, it looked like he was carrying uh, what would look like to be like an AR-15. So like College of Zion area? Yes. So where he was going? No, he was just standing at the corner. He was wearing well, what a was he dressed like? Like a Georgia the Jungle type of uh, costume. I have to take my glasses off. Police investigated a call Wednesday morning about a man dressed as George of the Jungle and carrying a gun. George of the Jungle was, was right, was an extremely funny cartoon series as I remember. Anyway, police tracked the man described by, by different people as an older man wearing, a, wearing jungle attire or a costume similar to the zookeeper in the, in the children's book Curious George in, in a cartoon series. Police eventually found the man. The man was carrying a telescope and a tripod. No, no gun was involved and no one was hurt during the investigation. And they were very nice to me, uh, actually, very courteous this time. <laughs> this, this time. Well, you know, I've, I've had, I've had you know, even in this area, you know, some um, encounters with police where, where they sort of seemed to assume that I did something wrong. Like, like I said, what are you doing? Where are you going? You know, do you have a job? What's your social security number? Um, you know, you know accuse me of being a peeping Tom. Um, various things. Uh, so... You know, I, I, I haven't been arrested or I haven't been shot or, or mishandled by police like, like uh, m many black people have been. But uh, I, I can sort of see where they're coming from. <laughs> to come, I am called, among the birds I bring rain, crow 
is my name. Robin sings a beggar's note. If it's okay, I'm just going to take this path in here, go in the bushes and, and uh, take a leak and come back. So it shouldn't take too long. Unless I see something while I'm peeing. Well, I met Mike back in the, in the early 1980s when he was a graduate student at, on campus. And he was a very active birder then and he'd come from Illinois and had an absolute huge wealth of knowledge about waterfowl and bird migration from years of birding since he was a kid. I'd never met anybody quite like Mike who just lived birds every day. I'm looking, I have a file of things that I have saved over the years from Mike, and this file dates back to the 1980s when we first started going bird watching together. Oh, here's the Brahms receipt. Look, here's a receipt from Brahms. Mladenov's friends all know that Mike is not a, does not go to a lot of fast food places to eat. He's very particular about what he eats. But one of the places he likes is Brahms. And not for going there to eat a hamburger or a hot dog or something. He goes there to get chocolate malts. Look what's on the back of this receipt. So it's a bunch of bird data. And we were just sitting there. And he started whipping this stuff out. This is what he does. Well, can you tell me about what you write on the back of receipts? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You write some data on the back of the receipts. Um, Joe Neal has some uh, receipts where you've tallied some. Uh, oh, well, I mean, I don't know. I, I use whatever I have. Uh, there's something else in here especially that I wanted to show you. We found out that we had a common interest in a musician named Tom Lear who, write, who sings these sarcastic songs about politics. And Mike got online and found a bunch of lyrics, and we talked about these for weeks. And he printed all this off for me from a Tom Lear album. Oh, yes, Tom Lear. Yes. Well, <clears throat> Tom Lear is, in, to call him a singer, uh, is kind of like uh, to call uh, Albert Einstein a philosopher. <laughs> We've gained notoriety and caused much anxiety in the audience. I don't know what, what my favorite, National Brotherhood Week is, I think, the one I like the best. <laughs> it's, it's one of them, anyway. Oh, the white folks hate the black folks, and the black folks hate the white folks. To hate all but the right folks is an old established rule. But during National Brotherhood Week, National Brotherhood Week, Lena Horn and Sheriff Clark are dancing cheek to cheek. It's My perspective is Joe Neal. Well, J Joe Neal right now is the only other person who goes bird watching a lot, uh, really. Uh, he gets. He, he, he does a, a lot of uh, community things, so he, he's well known by a lot of people, like, like, like the, the Audubon Society. You, you guys should have gone to one of the uh, Northwest Arkansas Audubon Society meetings, so you would see what that's like. He pr pretty much runs them. There's at least 15 turkey vultures in that cup. Well, uh, the Audubon Society, it's headed by Joe Neal, they have an outing each month. And if you're the slightest bit interested in birding, go. You'll, you'll need a pair of binoculars, about the only piece of equipment you'll need. You need to get a good pair. And uh, you can get cameras with lenses this long, and boy, you can see a bird over there, and you get him look like he's right there. And a lot of people, they've got a big old long list of all the birds they found. They check them off as they go, and they may be right, they may be wrong. We don't, we 
don't know. Uh, uh, the only way to be sure is like Mr. Audubon that, that, that painted all the pictures. He had him a gaming device, which was a once barrel shotgun, which he would go out and he'd spot a bird that he wanted to paint while well, he would shoot it and get it up close and he could just sit there and paint it real good. <laughs> We don't do that anymore. <laughs> well, uh, the difference between the way Mike and I go birding is that uh, Mike uses public transportation and he has his local rounds that are kind of in his patch. And I own an automobile and so I tend to go birding outside of the patch where Mike goes around Fayetteville and I tend to favor going to those places and looking at specific environments or specific birds. Whereas Mike goes to the same places regularly and he gets a whole different kind of data. It's true the birds are, are, are very colorful. You know, most people say they're visible, they're colorful, they make nice sounds that you can recognize. But to me, actually, that isn't what draws me. It's, it isn't really the birds, it's, it's the um, patterns. When I came to Fayetteville, I came to Fayetteville to try and get a PhD in ornithology, which I never did, uh, with Doug James, the professor. Yeah, as I said, he was more interested in mathematics than he was in biology. So he didn't take to biology very well. And he quit and stayed in town ever since. Ever since I was a kid, I, I was kind of interested in numbers. Uh, I was big on baseball averages and baseball statistics, which you know got me interested in baseball. And Steve knows that I'm a Cubs fan, <laughs> even though you know he's a big, uh, you know, a, a big say a big Cardinals fan is an understatement. <laughs> I thought I heard a cardinal chip. Oh, yep, cardinal. Looks like a male. You can see red. I, I'm colorblind, so if I can see it, I figure other people can. And with birds, you know, these patterns had not been worked out very well. People would say they were common, they were uncommon, but they would have no data. You know, and that's what interests me. I go bird watching. I keep a list. I I, I put them. I put the you know the list with the numbers online. So, you know, I, I, the, the change in climate has been reflected pretty strongly in, in a change of uh, bird composition. started looking at bird data and what it was is he was looking at bird data about the winter because if the climate is warming then some birds that normally would be south of Fayetteville should be becoming more common in Fayetteville as a result of the fact that the climate's a little warmer and so I'd ask him various questions about and here's two of them about winter brown thrasher records We've worked on several books together, a number of technical articles together, and Mike has always contributed his bir lots of bird data to them. And there's, look, there's a whole pile of this stuff. Uh, 
after they cut the bee tree down. Well, a beekeeper came and, and tried to capture the hive, but it was so weak that it's doubtful it could ever have survived. And we did, we did put it in a, in a hive, but it, it, uh, I, th I don't think the queen ever got in the hive because a couple of days later, the, all the bees were gone. The fellow that has a contract to cut the trees down, uh, he, he graciously gave me the wood. <laughs> I don't go bird watching at all anymore. I, I just restrict myself to my backyard feeder. And I see some interesting things there. I'm Kelly Mulholland. Donna Mulholland. We're and, with the group Still on the Hill. We're, we're a folk duo, uh, is what we do for a living. I'm not, neither one of us, are, we're not scientists. We're not ornithologists. Um, not like Joe Neal or, 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 or like Mike, Mike Mladenoff. Um, but we're very avidly interested in birds. Out in the field where the corn grows tall, the sun burns hot and the hard rains fall. We were asked to be the, uh, to teach ornithology at the uh, Arkansas Audubon Camp, which Hel is Halberg. the Halberg Ecology Camp is what it's called. And we teach, we've been doing that for 15 years. And, so at each camp there's about 150 kids over the two weeks and and it's it's very exciting because a lot of times that's what it takes you, to spark a kid into a lifelong pursuit of bird watching or where it's, to make that part of their world sometimes it just takes this one moment when when uh, for instance you they catch a yellow bill cuckoo in their binoculars for the first time sometimes i, I tell people but this isn't quite true I, it, 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 it didn't get me interested in birds, this, this following incident, but but, uh, but what happened was actually true, that, uh, I, that when I was uh, in junior high school, um, <clears throat> we had this in, indoor courtyard, we, we had the school sur surrounded an outdoor area. So, yeah, we had this outdoor courtyard where people would play during lunch break. And so I went outside, and we were playing this game called uh, Foursquare, I think. Uh, but at any rate, I was dressed in corduroy pants with a corduroy coat, brown corduroy. And uh, a brown creeper started crawling up my leg. <laughs> and I couldn't get it off, actually. The more I tried to get it off, the more it dug in. It had it was sharp claws, those things. And so they kind of, you know, I don't know. It reminded me that they were around. <laughs> Put that way, the birds were around. So.